in order to simulate uh, the evolution of one game, I'm going to create here a table where I will have several columns calculated based on uh, the, the results of the game. So first of all, uh, I will put a column called flip number just to know for myself which flip, uh, right? Is it the first time we flip, second, third, and so on? I will extend this table further, but for now, let's just do it one, two, three, four. Now I will want I want the the result of the game, and uh, and let's assume the the or the result of the flip. Uh, let's assume head will be coded as one and tail will be coded as zero. Now the reason for this is be because in in the at risk. Uh, the, the result of uh, a random distribution has to be numeric. It cannot be, uh, uh, let's say, a text, head or tail. I, I'm going to use here numerical coding. So one will mean here head and zero will mean a tail. So for example, the first game should be one, one and one, head, 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 right? And then uh, I can have other uh, games generated. So let's say, right, there wouldn't be a fourth leap, but let's say this is a tail. Uh, um, Right, actually, so the, the problem with the simulation here is that the table should end somewhere, but I don't know where it will end. I have to prepare the table long enough to be able to accommodate any possible game. And actually, this game could be quite long, right? It can be 11 flips. It can probably be more flips if I just uh, um, don't reach the difference three between the number of tails and heads uh, for, for quite a few rounds. I will be running this game for quite a long time. Now, the important thing to calculate here is number of heads, I'll call it so far. I would like to, this column to tell me how many heads were thrown so far. And actually, this is easy to calculate because all I need is I need to accumulate this column, right? I need to say, um, I need to say that this is equal to this value. And then the next value is the previous value plus was it a head or a tail? So if I do accumulate it like this, you see this tells me so far I have two heads. And if I drag it down, it will be three heads. And now that there is a tail here, even though we should have stopped the game, but this table continues, you see the number of heads does not increase. Why? Because I'm adding to three, I'm adding additional zero. So I'm not, uh, I'm not actually increasing it. Now I can generate number of tails so far. It's actually quite easy because uh, if it's a head, then it means it's not a tail. If, if it's not a head, it must be a tail. So one way to easily calculate this is just to take which flip is it and subtract the number of heads, and I will know the number of tails. And notice the tails is 0, 0, 0, and then it should be 1 because the result here was 0. That means it's a tail, right? And so I have now columns, one that calculates how many heads are there so far and uh, how many tails are there so far right and then then one more column that i will create is absolute difference let's just call it absolute difference and absolute difference i will calculate it using excel function absolute and take heads minus tails or tails minus heads doesn't matter so here the difference is one and if you see the difference becomes three here. So actually, this is what helps me detect when we should stop the game. And then I will create a column. There are many ways to simulate this, but I have a, a column still playing. Are we still playing or not? And the still playing, of course, at the beginning, uh, you, you have to say, well, we are still playing for sure at the beginning. So I will say one. Again, still playing is one and not playing anymore, it will be coded as zero. So I will say here that uh, I will be still playing if there are two conditions satisfied. So I will put end here. And the end condition will be if the previous one is still playing. So the previous value is still one. And the second condition, the previous difference was, um, was less than three. Right, it wasn't three. It must have been less than three, right? And we didn't reach three. Then put still playing. Otherwise, put zero. We're no longer playing, right? So this is a bit complex function, but this is specific to this simulation. 
um, right? And uh, you have to come up with some way of detecting when you're still playing, but when you stop playing. So if I copy this formula further down, you see at this point, even though the previous turn we were still playing, but this number is no longer smaller than three, therefore this value changes to zero. And then with all the following values, if I copy this further down, will also be zero, right? So if I try, for example, now, let's say this will be tail, but this will be head again, and this will be head again, and notice I have another evolution of the game, which should stop here, right? It, I play for five turns, and it seems it's correctly calculating when I have, um, when I have, oops, I just discovered that this is incorrect because the consecutive numbers here, let's put this equal this plus one, and let's copy it again because consecutive numbers should be three, four, five, and so on, right? So the number of heads, the number of tails should be correctly calculated. We can verify one head, two heads, still two heads, one tail, three heads, one tail, four heads, one tail, because this is, right, there is four heads here and one tail, and this is where the difference becomes three, and this is the last time we're still playing, and the rest there are zeros. Let me actually uh, now extend this. Now, you, you see, this table should be long enough to ac accommodate one uh, simulation. So what I will do now is I will try to take this row, and um, for as long as the game can be, I, sh I should have this table ready longer than any game can be. Now, actually, you cannot have an upper limit on the game, but because the game is unlikely to exceed, you know, maybe something like 200 rounds, very unlikely. I will just create a table with 200 rows, right? Right, so I have a game, and actually I had to fill out the heads and tails now automatically. Of course, now I have a model that can evaluate a game that I will enter manually. So now the point is, uh, the, the point has come where we have to introduce randomness into this game. But before we do this, I will also use conditional formatting just to indicate when we have a head and when we have a tail. I will select this column, head tail, and I will use conditional formatting, one of the coloring, let's say, green and red, so that we can easily see whether it was head or tail. And also I will do coloring here for are we still playing or not. And again, I will use conditional formatting, for example, bars. And now you will see we're playing, we're playing, and this is zero, so we're no longer playing. You can see how long the, the game was. Now notice that the number of flips now is, can be obtained as the sum of this column, because if we're still playing for five times and the values are five values are one, then that means the total length of the game was five flips. So I can introduce this as a result here and link my, my major input to this simulation right, uh, with this uh, evolution of the game that is simulated, right? So actually, I have 209, it seems, uh, rounds of the game maximum, but that is uh, the detail. So here now, this 5 is, is a calculation by summing these values. So next, fli next clip will be about uh, how do I put random values here in order to uh, actually simulate different evolutions of the game.